Yes, Anthony. Listen, we have a real problem. I gotta go pick up Jay. I guess he's been arrested again or something. Um, do you think you and Bayou Betty could possibly introduce Couch Critics this week? We won't be long. No problem. I was also programmed to review movies from the 80s, 90s, and the future. You can always count on Mandroid. I knew I could. See ya. Hello. I am John, the Mandroid. And I'm Bayou Betty. We are here at the request of Anthony Stewart and Jay Rodding to tell you a little bit about our movie, The Eliminator. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anthony Stewart. And I'm Jay Rodding. Welcome to Couch Critics. A very special edition of Couch Critics, I must say. Well, they're all special. But in this one, <laughs> things get even specialer. <laughs> this is a review of Eliminators. And where to begin with Eliminators, Anthony? Where to begin? Oh, God. Uh, pretty much anywhere. <laughs> Eliminators is a, is a movie uh, taking place now. Uh, the main character is, well, half man, half machine, uh, a cyborg, so a, a mandroid. That's right. He's, uh, no, he's not just an android, he's a mandroid. Right. He's joined by a mercenary, a ninja, and a scientist to make a pretty unlikely quartet. Uh, they are an unlikely quartet. I, I do like also that the mandroid's name is John. I think that that's a nice little touch. You know? John, well, John Doe. I think yeah. it's kind of like, he was found in a plane crash. Um, and then there was kind of an experiment on him. The, so. the Mandroid himself actually looks pretty much like the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, so the John reference might be a reference to John Connor. I don't I'm know. I'm going to have to disagree with you there. I really, oh. I know you were, you were very, oh, look, it's the Terminator, yeah. but I couldn't help but think the whole time, Robocop, um... Well, there is a Robocop. There's <laughs> right. Masters of the Universe is in there, too, a little bit yeah. of Masters of the Universe. Yeah. Well, yeah, with that, because he could remove his arm. Yeah. Uh... Well, maybe we should get everybody, everybody context of how on earth all of these crazy, kooky premises come into one blender mix of movie and entertainment. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go to a clip, and we'll just show a few of the main characters in a little <laughs> in a, in a whirlwind montage. Yes, let's do that. No! No! Harry Fontana. King of the Wild Frontier. Shut up and drive. Hold on! They killed him. <laughs> well, that pretty much says it all. Uh, you know, these clips that we show, uh, we usually say they don't summarize the whole movie, but literally with Eliminators every five minutes, not only is it a whole new plot direction, but there's all new characters, all new crazy uh, scenery. Lasers, things. Neanderthals. Yes, there's Neanderthals. I fully expected to see a giant fake dinosaur folk come down at one point, actually. Well, there was a point where we actually, because there's time travel in this movie, it could have happened. It literally could have happened. You never know. Okay, so, alright, here's a, here's a brief, the brief rundown. Eliminators, uh, it starts off, we have Mandroid, who's been used uh, used a bit for evil and some time travel. Um, he basically he gets away from the evil. He meets up with his team, his compatriots, mm -hmm. um, all along the way on a one big giant Mandroid swamp bayou adventure. <laughs> um, right along, then he meets Bayou Betty and her crew. Mm. Uh, well, now don't rush into things here. Bayou Betty, we gotta have just a little moment for Bayou Betty. Bit of, bit of a love interest of yours. Uh, I gotta say, Bayou Betty is, of course, whom I have my plaid shirt on in, in honor of. Nice. Yeah, well, Bayou Betty, of course, you wouldn't expect with a movie that opens with a an android doing battle with Roman soldiers. You wouldn't all of a sudden with expect lasers. that yeah. <laughs> with lasers for them all of a sudden to cut to a, a high speed Bayou chase with with speeding boats and uh, basically a. Uh, a very butch woman in a plaid shirt, a very scary-looking butch woman, and she calls herself Bayou Betty, and, and you know she's there, she's in the movie, 
She doesn't really belong in the movie, but yet she's she's mesmerizing. But nothing really belongs in the movie. No, but she's mesmerizing, well, and she is everything I could expect in a backwoods hick. You know, a little bit of Snake Eater harking back there. You know, oh, there is a lot of Snake Eater influence in this movie. Oh yeah, it was kind of like RoboCop meets Snake Eater. A little bit like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and for all right, for anyone out there losing interest, because like <laughs> we we do have some viewers that will only watch the first three or four minutes. I don't know we, why. For God's sake, we better we better mention Natasha Yar. Yes, she plays the actual scientist. She's she, she's one of the quartet. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, she has a wet T-shirt sequence, uh, which is just phenomenal. I think I'm probably <laughs> gonna, I might actually put. Well, let's let's go to a clip actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right up to that. There is no coincidence your, your VCR must have some sort of auto track. Oh, it, it's been programmed that way, Anthony. It's been programmed it that way. It seeks out Natasha Yar. It's no coincidence she got a major role on Star Trek The Next Generation a year after this movie was out. You know, it's funny because Natasha Yar goes to The Next Generation after this movie. Oh, yeah. Years later, who do we see? The Borg. Mm, there is a Borg <laughs> tie-in for sure there. I, I totally agree. Man, Gene Dorian, Roddenberry, I'm so on to you. Well, let's go one step or further. Or onto your estate. <laughs> one, let's go one step further, Anthony. One of the characters' names is Fontana. And as we know, Fontana is one of the creative forces behind Star Trek. So there you have it. There's no, there's no coincidence in any of this. Cons yeah. Conspiracy alert. Oh, Conspiracy God. alert. Anyways, yes. the major villain in the movie, his name is Reeves. And I uh, forgot there was a villain. Yeah, well, this no. movie was so good, you didn't need a villain. What, what with the caveman and, well, Spot, the, uh... <laughs> well, Mandroid put himself in so many predicaments without even having a villain. Yeah. Or anyone to fight, but it, it was really amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Reeves is the one who actually created him against his will. You know, that wasn't what he wanted. He, he wanted to be a human, and he actually, at one point, re uh, Mandroid manages to switch off the mechanical side of his brain and just be on human autopilot. Yeah, and some would argue that meant he was only using half his brain, which <laughs> might have been why he was almost useless in the film. But he liked having that human edge. Yeah, and with all those heroes in the movie, actually, Mandroid, frankly, takes a back seat to all the rest of the uh, Especially the, the ninja. The ninja. Wow. wow. Like, hey, well, ninjas, though. What are you going to do? The ninja jumps right through a, a moving fan at one point, which I wasn't aware ninjas could do, but there you have it. Oh, you're not aware of it. Most of what ninjas can do, I would imagine. Uh, well, neither, neither am I. For that matter. <laughs> yeah, this one was quite frankly one of the most amazing ninja stunts I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm. Well, the thing is, ninjas have been around really for for thousands of years, mm. whereas mandroids have only been around never. <laughs> so really, yeah, the ninja the ninja has years on the yeah. mandroid as far as perfecting their craft yeah. and what they do. Yeah. Um, well, like, maybe one little brief mention about Spot. Uh, the oh, yeah. Tasha Yar creates a robot, a Tommy-like robot. Remember those little robots from the 80s, the little white robots? Well, mm -hmm. Spot, Spot yeah. starts off like a little white Tommy robot, and then she decides to paint him camouflage. Yeah, and he has some sort of antimatter movement capability, oh, which is <laughs> never really explained. It's not really a successful special effect, but i got to admire their, their integrity. They, they have spunk. They, they spent yeah. most of their money on the electricity filter. That's right. I think. Yeah. So, well, the movie ends. Uh, it's a pretty climactic uh, battle at the end. Oh, yeah. A battle among mandroids. Yeah, and, it, well, that's because Reeves, uh, it becomes a mandroid. Reeves is actually played by Roy Dotras of Picket Fences, if you can believe it or not. So that's, uh, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. it's mandroid versus mandroid. And, of course, our hero mandroid just, frankly, doesn't measure up. But that's, uh... You know. So I guess if you were uh, if you were gonna rate if you were gonna rate Eliminators mm. on a on a scale of detachable cyborg arms, would Mandroid be like a 